Right. So in our last class, uh, we have uh, seen the electrical characteristic of a p-n junction diode, right? We have seen about uh, materials, right? Semiconductors, insulators, and conductors. And then we have seen semiconducting materials, intrinsic and extrinsic. In extrinsic, we have seen two types. One is p-type semiconductors and n-type semiconductors. Then we have seen about p-n junctions, right? How to form a p-n junction and what is the electrical characterization of a p-n junction, right? So in brief, I would uh, draw an IV characteristic of a p-n junction, right? For example, this is my circuit symbol of a diode, right? So this is plus and minus. If I draw the IV curve, so I will have something like this, right? So simply I can say that, Right above this knee voltage, there will be a huge current flow, right? And below this one, your diode will not conduct electricity. Am I right? So if you connect a diode to a battery, okay, for a through a resistance to a battery, right? Of course, this is plus and plus minus. Right, so this diode is connected under forward bias, right? This is forward biased, right? Hence, I am going to have a current, but the voltage of the battery must be higher than this VD, area potential, right? Which is acting across the diode, right? So if this is E, if I want to have a current I, then E must be greater than VD, right? So if this resistance is R, then the current through this one, I will be E minus VD divided by R, right? So given that your E is greater than VD, right? It doesn't mean that once you have less E, so then uh, E is less than VD, then you have a current in the reverse direction, right? That is true, but only for solar cells, right? Not P and junction diodes, right? We'll see about solar cell at the end of this chapter, right? So this is how you can calculate it. But once the diode is connected in reverse bias, right? So here, Okay, we have a resistor R and then yeah, minus two plus and sorry, plus two minus and minus two plus, right? RB, right? There will not be any current. There will be a small current, which is reverse saturation current. I could mark it as small I. This is equal to the reverse saturation current, as we have seen, there will be a narrow current, right? There will be a small current through the diode, which is called as the reverse saturation current, right? If it is uh, that in terms of microamps and sometimes nano amperes, right? Depends on the voltage you are applying, right? But when your voltage reaches, VB or oh, breakdown voltage, right? VB, this will be much higher than VD, right? VB will be much higher than VD, right? So VD is actually typically 0 0.7 for silicon and 0 0.3 for germanium, right? We take it for simple calculations, right? It will be about 0 0.65 and 27 or 28, right? Right? I don't know the exact value. You can refer it online, right? But uh, for our calculation, we assume VD as 0 0.7 voltage and VD for germanium diode, right? This is for SI diode and this is for germanium diodes, right? And VB, barrier potential is much higher than your, uh, um, sorry, barrier breakdown potential is and then you will have a sudden current. And this process is not reversible. Once your diode is break down, that's all. You cannot use the diode again. Clear, you cannot use the diode again. 
so i would say within the range without by forgetting uh, just about uh, leave about the breakdown within the active range of diode right within the active range of diode you are going to have current only when the diode is connected in forward bias right when the diode is connected in forward bias when it is connected to negative connected in reverse bias there will not be any current right so there will be a current of course but that is reverse saturation current which is much less or practically it is very hard to measure using your commercially available meters right don't worry about that one right you need some micro ampmeters or nano ampmeters to measure that one right practically i could say your diodes will be conducting electricity whenever they are connected in forward bias right now uh, we'll see about the applications of pn junction diodes applications right application of p n junction diodes uh, if you cannot read my handwriting or any 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 um, problem in your network of hearing my audio please let me know right i can repeat it for you right so one of the main application is the diodes we can use them in rectifiers right power rectifiers in simple words uh, 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 the electric power or electric current or electric voltage in our plug points in our house plug points are sinusoidal waves right sine wave something like this right so t v right and uh, it's about 50 hertz right in sri lanka we are using an electricity of 50 hertz right which means in every second it changes its direction 50 times right positive negative positive negative positive negative right it changes its direction 50 times right so when you have a connection right from your plug point if you have a resistor right the current direction will be oscillating up and down up and down 50 times every second right 50 times every second we are using ac electricity for transmission problem uh, to uh, avoid the transmission losses right we you will see uh, in 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 the uh, ac theory section right so to avoid the transmission losses we are using the ac current but our mobile phones and laptops right mobile phones laptop and computers they operates on a dc current right dc current will be something like this right 3.7 or 5 or 19 this is v and this is t right so dc current or direct current is a constant voltage supply right it is a constant voltage source right your laptop battery mobile phone battery or the output of your computer power supply right there will be multiple points and each of them will be dc right it will be a direct voltage this is alternating current or alternating voltage but you need a dc current so just imagine you are plugging your uh, uh, mobile phone charger or laptop charger on the plug point right okay of course we have 230 rms right 230 voltage right 230 no 220 to 230 voltage but your mobile phone battery is operating about 3.7 to 5 voltage right depends on your mobile uh, mobile phone model right so what we need to do right your charger has to reduce the 2 to 2 230 voltage into 3.7 voltage and also it has to convert this oscillating current or ac current into a dc current into a dc 
current right so we can use diodes to do this one right to do this one right so let's see how we can use pn junction diodes to do or to rectify an ac current right so first of all so we have 230 voltage which is massive right 230 voltage is very big so we need to reduce it we need to step down it so we can use a step down transformer right hope you all aware about step down transformers right you have studied in your a levels right step down transformer the number of turns at the output side must be less than in the number of turns at the input side right so there will be a uh, yes this is your plug point right and then here you have a step down transformer which could be a ratio right i can say that uh, uh, maybe 20 is to 1 so if i apply 20 voltage i will have one voltage here so if it is 220 voltage and i am using 20 is to 1 so i am have i have 11 voltage at this point right so the turns ratio is 20 is to 1 then yeah voltage will be divided based on the ratio right this is uh, i think this you have studied in your a levels and then still if this is an ac signal right something like this of course this 11 voltage is also an ac signal but somehow step down right somehow step down but what we need to do is we need to make it as a dc current right we have seen that the diode will conduct electricity whenever it is connected in forward wires so just I am connecting a diode in the current path, right? So it, it, is a, it has a breakdown potential. Let that be V, T, and this is R. This is R. Just assume that uh, V, D is um, 0.7 voltage, right? 0.7 voltage. Uh, for, uh, just assume that it is a silicon diode, right? Silicon PN junction diode. Oh, German. Oh, silicon. Okay. Right. So, whenever you are analyzing the circuit, one thing you can assume is when compared to the voltages, you can neglect the effect of VD, right? Since it is smaller value, right? 0.7, you can neglect it, right? For example, if it is when you are comparing 11 voltage, that could be less than 10 percentage, right? So, you can easily neglect it for your calculations right and just see we have a resistor here right let's see how the current changes at resistance r right so as i said earlier the input current will be something like this right positive negative positive negative right so this is plus this is minus right now during the positive half cycle or this cycle, the current direction will be from here to here, then here to here, and it will be completed at this point, right? This direction, which means, right, the diode is under forward bias. Am I right? The plus is connected to plus and minus is connected to minus, hence, the diode is connected in forward bias. So I will have that uh, voltage, right? I will have this portion at my output, right? Similarly, for the negative half cycle, this region, right? Now I am going to have this as my plus and this as my new minus, right? So the current flow will be through this direction and then it is going to be completed here right now look at here the plus is connected to the minus of the diode and plus of the diode is connected to the minus supply 
Hence, I could say during uh, uh, the negative half cycle, right, the PN junction is under reverse bias and there will not be any current through the uh, 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 diode. So I would say during this one, the diode is not going to conduct any electricity. So that would be zero. Right. Similarly, during the next positive half cycle, it will be a current and zero for the next half cycle and current and zero, something like this. Right, so what happening is, it is simply right, so this will be time and this will be voltage V, right? So I may have this as the same V, same 11 voltages, or if you want to consider VD, it will be 11 minus VD. Okay, forget about that one first, right? We'll assume it as V, right? We can neglect the barrier potential here. Right, so now we have positive half cycles and whenever a diode, a single diode is connected to an AC circuit, half cycle, right? Or either negative or positive half cycle will be chopped off from the circuit, right? See here, all the waveform at the negative side is completely removed. And this will be your output, clear. Right, so now, but uh, uh, um, what is this current? Is this AC or DC? This one is alternating or direct current. This is direct current, right? This is direct current, right? But not a constant voltage. Why? Because current will be flowing only in one direction. Right, so positive and zero, positive and zero, positive and zero. So there are no changes in the current direction. Right, there are no changes in the current direction. Hence, we can call it as a direct current, but still we have change in voltages. Right, change in voltages. Right, similarly, but what is the disadvantage of this? waveforms. What is the disadvantage of this one? Of course, we are losing half cycle, right? We are losing exactly half of the power in the IC, in the, in the input, right? We are simply removing off the half and that half will be dissipated in the diode, right? So that will be, uh, uh, that will not allow to the load resistance. So we are losing one half of the waveform, right? So to avoid this one, we can go for another morphology, another circuit uh, morphology, which is a full wave rectifier. We'll do the derivation later, right? So let's see about full wave rectifier. Right, full wave rectifier. WR, right? HWR and FWR, you can use it for simplification. Right. A full wave rectifier, right? We have two different types of full wave rectifier. One is the bridge rectifier, and the other one is center tap transformer rectifier, right? First, we'll see about uh, the bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier consists four diodes. Right, four diodes. Simply, they are connected like this, right? So one, two, all are connected in the same direction, right? From here. Right, so now what I can do is, I can connect this one to my transformer then there will be an AC source. 
right transformer and here i am going to connect my load across these two right there i'm going to have my r l o load resistance or output i could say right so this will be my load resistance right now let's see how it works for both positive and negative half cycle right so yeah let's see right so during the positive half cycle this will be plus am i right and this will be minus so the current is going to flow through this right or the voltage right so at this point look at here if we have high voltage at this point this diode will be automatically reverse bias am i right but this is connected in forward bias so the current will be flowing through this one and then again at this point look at here this diode is connected under reverse bias so it will be coming here and then going through the resistance and the direction of current is from top to bottom right in this way and then coming here and then at this point again look at here see what is happening yeah for you it looks both diodes are forward bias but this one and this one look at here they are equal voltage right almost same voltage right which could say the barrier potential will still block the voltage to go from here to there right hence this is connected to negative so this will be simply negative sorry uh, uh, reverse sorry forward bias so the current will be going through this one and then comes and finishes at this point right so this will be the current direction and it is forward biased right let's see during the negative half cycle so during this cycle so my plus is going to be this one and this will be my minus right so plus okay of course i am going to have the current here here sorry the voltage at this point look at here this diode is reverse bias so i am going to have the current this one and then again this is reverse bias so of course i am going to have the current again i am going to have the current through rl in the same direction which is from top to bottom right not bottom to top right the current is going to be top to bottom for both positive and half cycle negative half cycles right now it comes here yes and then yeah this way at this point of course here and here equal voltage so it will go there and completed at this point right so the negative half cycle the current direction path will be this look at here during both positive and negative half cycle the current is flowing in the same direction it is not oscillating it is not changing its direction right so i could simply draw the voltage change across r as something like this this is during the positive half cycle sorry and then again this is due right this is positive half cycle and this is negative half cycle right which is simply holding your negative half cycle into positive half cycle look at here in half wave rectifier you are simply chopping off half of the wave that's why it is called as half wave rectifier right h w r right but in positive half, uh, sorry in full wave rectifier you are converting the negative half cycle into positive half cycle both this one and this one i will say as 
direct current. They are not alternating current anymore because the direction is not changing. Clear, right? But still, what I need is a constant voltage, something like. But this one is again oscillating, even though the direction is not changing, but the voltage is oscillating, right? Let's see what we can do to make this oscillating voltage into a direct current like this, right? The first thing we can do is smoothing, right? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> right, so okay. See this. Right, so now we have an AC signal. Right, so just recollect what a capacitor do. Right, what is the function of a capacitor? It will be storing the energy and releasing it. Right, there will be two parallel plates as we seen earlier. It will store the charge in it and it will release it whenever it requires. Right now, let's see what will happen if we connect a capacitor C here. Right, if we connect a capacitor C parallel to the road load resistance here. Right, so now I can draw my uh, output waveform something like this, right? So, of course, I am a positive, zero, positive zero, something like this, right? This is T and V. This is V, right? So V, V, and we can neglect the, right? So now I have connected a capacitor, right? We have connected a capacitor in the circuit, right? We connected a capacitor in the circuit, right? So let's see, now imagine, you are starting from here, right? This cycle. Until this point, you are gradually increasing the voltage across the load resistance. Am I right? So during that time, this capacitor will charge or will be storing the energy from the circuit. And once it started reducing, it will release the energy. Right, so after this point, it will start at releasing the energy which is stored. Right, so until this one, it will be charging and from here on, it will be releasing the energy. So effectively, this will be something like this. And once it reached here, it will be started releasing the energy. That releasing will be in an exponential curve. We have seen it in our AC theory section, right? The DK is in an exponential curve, right? And that depends on the capacitance value, what you are using, right? That is, depends on the capacitor. We could write the equation, right? We could write the, uh, 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 um, uh, a, a DK equation like, right? So the function of this one as E to the power minus T by RC, right? So this is E to the power, right? I wrote it as big ones, okay. E to the power minus T by RC, right? The function of this one, right? Since minus T by RC, 
if c is bigger this one is smaller then the final value will be smaller right sorry bigger minus means e to the power minus infinity is zero right e to the power minus infinity is zero so just there will be any effect of uh, capacitor but once you have a higher capacitor or higher higher capacitor then you will have a certain value and this is actually a exponential if your c is small right if your c is smaller you may have it something like this as well it will be finishing at this point and then zero and then going up if your c is bigger or good enough then it will be something like this as well right something like this as well right so the curve filling is depends on your capacitance c right we'll see the derivation later right now uh, uh, still you have filled this space but still there yeah, right so we have a minimum voltage right look at here in full wave rectifier let's see we are connecting a capacitance here. we are connecting a parallel capacitance c right a capacitor c right look at here they are much closer right the half cycles in the outputs are much closer they are not like this right so even though we are using a smaller capacitance until this one it will be charging and then it will be discharging simply the value will be filled easily right if we have a bigger capacitance it will be like this if your capacitance value is lower it will be like this am i right so this is the difference between a uh, uh, full wave rectifier and half wave rectifier right even though even after filling it right so you have like this right so see here we have an oscillating voltage our output will be something like this right tomorrow i will demonstrate this one using cro2 right not tomorrow maybe uh, shall we have friday's class at uh, 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 2 o'clock is it okay for you friday's class at 2 o'clock okay just uh, send me a message on whatsapp right i can uh, make arrangements to bring all the cros and equipments and i can demonstrate what is happening during this one right right so we could say that we have a v max and v minimum and the voltage is oscillating between v max and v minimum am i right your output voltage is oscillating between v max and v minimum right still this is not good enough for our application for mobile phones or laptops we need to make it as a, a sharp a, a line right there comes we are using a special diode called zena diode right zena diode we'll see about zena breakdown and the application of zena diodes in our next class right so uh, 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 we can see you on wednesday right sorry friday at 2 um, o'clock or any any time after 7 uh, i cannot open the lab sure definitely i will upload it don't worry right so uh, uh, i can uh, bring the uh, cro uh, diodes and everything and i can show you how this works to you right i can demonstrate it to you okay right so we'll have next class at okay let's stop